Welcome to the Stanton MD Show. I'm board certified emergency physician, Dr. Ryan Stanton. In this episode, we talk about a growing problem that involves insurance, healthcare, and access to emergency medicine. The emergency department represents the primary site for the stabilization of unstable and emergent conditions, as well as the safety net for our healthcare access of millions of Americans. There's been a great deal of debate, angst, and opinions on the finances of healthcare, but it involves big dollars, corporate interests, and in many cases, profiteering. There is a saying that the one holding the purse strings makes all the decisions. In our system, that often means the government and private insurance companies. These groups are the primary payers of our system, serving as the middleman between the patients, taxpayers, and those that provide care. In 2015, one of the largest insurers in the country, Anthem, decided they were going to develop and grow a program that they said was an effort to deter the non-emergent use of the emergency department. Their PR education was that the ER was too costly of a care source for non-emergent problems. Their solution was to determine after the patient had gone to the emergency room whether it was an emergency or not. They would then deny the claim and have the bill sent to the patient, stating their visit was non-emergent and never should have been in the ER. The rumor was that the program started in Kentucky in 2015, but no denials were seen until mid-2017. When Anthem actually started denying claims in 17, they started in Missouri, Kentucky, and Georgia. Unfortunately, they didn't do any education prior, had a list of denial codes that were secret to the providers and patients, and had diagnoses that clearly had emergent potential. As the program has grown, thousands of claims have been denied, and customers are being faced with thousands of dollars in medical bills, uncertainty, and the fear of the emergency department. In this episode of the Stanton MD Show, we sit down with three women that had their claims denied in 2017. We hear their stories, their fears, and how they see this impacting their futures and the futures of others. We start off with their stories. Allison Wren, Brittany Cloyd, and Kimberly Mesh all thought they had an emergent, potentially life-threatening condition. They all went to an emergency department sometime in 2017. They all have Anthem and all have their claims for coverage denied. In a program that Anthem states is only there to deter clearly non-emergent visits, these three women show a program that puts profits over patients. We begin with Brittany Cloyd, a 27-year-old wife and mother from Central Kentucky who presented to Frankfurt Regional Medical Center with extreme right lower abdominal pain and fever in 2017. Um, I started out the night before I went to the hospital with some really bad lower right side pain. Um, didn't think a whole lot of it, so I kind of, it was maybe like a level three, four, it wasn't too bad. Went to bed, eventually had a lot of trouble sleeping and it progressively got worse. Um, woke up the next morning and was definitely not feeling up to going to work, so I called into work and the pain continued to worsen. Got really nauseous, had no appetite, and then eventually decided to take my temperature just kind of on a whim. I didn't really feel feverish, took my temperature and it was over 102. Appendicitis is often a surgical emergency characterized by abdominal pain, often starting around the belly button and then eventually down to the right lower quadrant. It also can have fever nausea, vomiting, and decreased appetite, many of the same symptoms experienced by Brittany. So called my mom who has a little bit of nurse training and also a lot of mom training and she said you need to get to the ER now I'm coming to pick you up and I said no I'm sure it's fine she's like no that that sounds like appendicitis you need to go to the ER and, and make sure everything's okay. So that's the exact same thing that happened when my appendix ruptured when I was younger the right side pain the fever the nausea that's your appendix. So uh, she came and picked me up, we went to the ER. As soon as we got into the ER, the, the nurses at the front station seemed very concerned and took me immediately back to a room and got tests running and going and, and we went from there. Her final diagnosis was pelvic pain of unknown etiology. In fact, a clear answer is only found in about 50% of abdominal pain cases that present to the emergency department. The next case involves Allison Wren a wife and mother of two sons that lives in Lexington, Kentucky, and presented to Baptist Health with severe right lower quadrant abdominal pain, which she states had her doubled over in her kitchen floor. It was the middle of the summer, and I was home. I'm a stay-at-home mom with my two kids, and we were just, it was a Friday. We were just having a lazy morning, and they asked if I could make waffles. So we were making homemade waffles, and just instantly, um, I was just in really horrific pain all in my abdomen where I was actually ended up down on the floor. Um, I thought I was gonna pass out, so I kept calling my husband. 
at work and he rushed home really fast. Um, and we kind of waited probably about a half hour for the pain to subside, but it, it didn't. Um, so at that point, I called a friend um, in the neighborhood who I knew was a physician assistant, and she kind of urged me to go seek treatment at the emergency room. Allison was eventually diagnosed with a ruptured ovarian cyst. Our final story involves Kim Fister Mesh, a wife and mother also from Lexington that presented to an ER with severe headache and elevated blood pressure. It was the evening and I started to get a very bad headache. So I took some ibuprofen and put cold compresses on my head. Um, as the evening went on, the headache uh, progressively got uh, worse uh, up to the point it was two in the morning and um, I woke my husband up telling him that I had a severe headache um, we checked my blood pressure it was extremely elevated uh, so I took some more Tylenol and put more cold compresses on my head and then by four o'clock in the morning the headache was so extreme. It was like the worst headache I'd ever had in my life. I thought I was going to have a stroke. The worst headache of life is a huge concern to emergency physicians. This is one of the big tip-offs for bleeding within the brain and is something that really concerns those that work in the emergency department. So I asked him if he would take me to the emergency room and he did and uh, was seen right away. Blood pressure was extremely elevated. Um, my head was, was just pounding. Again, I thought I was having a stroke. Um, they immediately did a head, head CT, um, administered some pain medication, and came back to tell me that um, they wanted to monitor the blood pressure, and they got the information back from the CT and said that I had bacterial mastoiditis. Uh, I was prescribed an antibiotic and sent home uh, about 8.30 that morning. Bacterial mastoiditis is an infection of the area that sits behind and around the ear. It requires antibiotics and causes severe pain. It can also cause significant complications including facial paralysis, brain abscesses, meningitis, and hearing loss. Kim's husband, Daryl Mesh, also had significant fears for his wife's health and safety. The headache was so severe that we couldn't wait. Um, she, I mean, we were both really afraid that she was going to stroke, and um, um, there was no place else to go. I thought I was going to have a stroke. Yes. She, she came down and said that she can't, she can't wait. She's... Couldn't bear it any Couldn't longer. Couldn't bear it anymore. And she tried. She was a trooper from from midnight on. Um, you know, she she tried to, to wait it out to where we could go to a my you know, primary a care, doctor care doctor in the, the morning. Next morning, and it just wasn't gonna. We she just couldn't last it out anymore. She was just. I really thought I was gonna have a stroke. I said, you yeah. know, I, I either am having a stroke, or an aneurysm. I, I've had an aneurysm because this isn't this this pain was pain that i have never felt before it's never been I, it was so intense i was shaken the blood pressure was so elevated and i told him i said it was elevated it's cause bad I mean, I, it's know. i said it's it's bad we need to go for allison Brittany, and kimberly their visits to the emergency department brought the good news of a condition that was not as bad as they initially feared. But denial letters from Anthem, their insurance provider, added a new challenge and added many questions to their situation. All three were shocked when they got letters from Anthem. I was discharged, you know, that day after three bouts of, of pain medicine through my IV. Finally, was that pain was at a manageable level. They sent me home. I didn't think much of it. And then a few weeks later, I got a denial letter from Anthem essentially stating that since it wasn't a stroke, a heart attack, or internal bleeding, it was not an emergency. Um, they would not be covering my $12,000 ER bill. Um, stated that that to a layperson, even that it would seem that it was not a med medical emergency and that I should have sought care elsewhere. Got a bill um, 
from the hospital and a letter from Anthem saying that they had rejected my claim and that I should not have um, sought the emergency room and that I should have visited my <laughs> local practitioner. Uh, the original bill was over $4,000. The uh, letter said uh, that uh, the symptoms that I had uh, were not considered an emergency room and I should have gone to my primary care physician. Oh, I was furious. Um, I work in Medicaid, so I deal a little bit with, with coding and billing and all that. Not a whole lot. That's not my primary job. but. Um, I'm also, you know, educated. I have a bachelor's degree in psychology. I don't consider myself to be stupid or uninformed or uneducated in any sense of the word. Um, and, and, but as a lay person and not as a medical person, I felt the need that I needed, you know, emergency care. And you put your symptoms in a WebMD. They say go to the ER. Called my mother. She said go to the ER. I, I felt like I was doing the right thing and I felt like I was about to die. <laughs> so I went to the ER and then it was, it was just completely a slap in the face that, you know, for someone who doesn't abuse services, who doesn't abuse my insurance, but uses it when I need it, that it wasn't going to be covered. But, but it is really, really insulting to, to not have my insurance cover any of it. I mean, that's why I pay for health insurance, it is to have medical bills covered. If you knew what you were having, um, you know, maybe I would have stayed at home and just ridden out the pain, but at the time, it was actually really scary. The pain was so bad, I was afraid I was going to pass out at home by myself with two little kids. Um, so it, it wasn't a decision lightly to go to the emergency room. I mean, my husband rushed home from work. We had to get childcare for our kids all super fast, you know, to then to go to seek treatment. Um, so it does make me really nervous because I feel like I'm a reasonable person who made a decision to seek care and then to then get a letter like that. Um, is really frustrating. I was very concerned, my husband was very concerned, and we felt like we needed to go there. Um, and also, once I got there, the doctor there, he made, you know, he definitely made me feel like I should have come. He explained what some of the complications could be, and so we needed to make sure none of those things were happening. And they rejected it really fast. Um, and they said they rejected it before they even had the records. So why not ask for the records yeah. before you just jump to rejecting it? I've since researched quite a bit, um, and I think that their wording is a, a aver something about a layperson of reasonable knowledge. If they think it's an emergency, um, then it's covered. It's also frustrating because, you know, I pay my premium on time every month, which is very considerable, and for them to just say that they have a list of medical complications that they're not going to pay for, which one was an ovarian cyst, is really frustrating considering that it could have led to complications. Fortunately, it didn't. But I just, you know, if, if I had known um, what it was and that it would be okay, I wouldn't have needed to go to the emergency room. But I'm not a doctor, so I sought medical treatment. Well, my primary care physician is not open at 4 o'clock in the morning. So actually the emergency room was the only place I could have gone to get help, especially with me thinking, I think I'm going to have a stroke. The headache was so intense, the blood pressure was so high that, you know, if I thought I could have waited any longer, I would have, but I, I couldn't, I couldn't. <laughs> You know, 54 white female, I have heard of women my age having strokes with high blood pressure. So I was scared. And I have not been to the emergency room in probably four years. Um, so, you know, I got very frustrated. Um, you know, went back and got my medical records, submitted those to Anthem. Uh, they still were denying the claim. Uh, they told me I needed to file an appeal. So my husband went online to file an appeal and they only give you 31 characters to file an appeal online. So we had to write a letter and we submitted the letter and they denied it. So now I'm appealing it for the second time. Because I did try to think of, okay, well, I have a headache, so I took, you know, the ibuprofen, uh, put cold compresses on my head, 
you know, thinking, you know, it's maybe just a going to be a migraine or something. I can get through this. I can get, yeah, I can get through this. But when it progressively got worse and the blood pressure kept elevating, at that point I knew that I was in trouble and that I needed to seek medical attention. It was something I could no longer, you know, um, do anything about. It says emergency room visit, $250 copay. It doesn't say I have to be referred to the ER. So, I should never have to be referred to the ER. If I think that it if I think I'm having a stroke even though I don't know that it's a stroke, I, I shouldn't have to be referred. Why should I have that's wasting time, especially if you think you're having a stroke. Isn't that time sensitive? I mean, that's something that needs to be addressed immediately. This program by Anthem not only involves a list of non-emergent conditions that could be severe and life-threatening, it also threatens the future of access to emergency medicine and care. I'm not a doctor or nurse. I have no medical training. Um, and, and of course, I would never second guess taking my daughter to the hospital if she needed emergency care, but I absolutely second guess myself now. You know, it, it wasn't an emergency. I was fine. It, I, I shouldn't have gone, you know, all of this, even though I felt like I was dying that day and I was insistent that my appendix was about to rupture. So it, it's, it, it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword because you feel too stupid to make medical decisions for yourself, but also, you know, obviously you're too smart to determine based on the, the, the layperson's perspective, I, I should have known better that it wasn't an emergency. So I'm kind of caught in the middle. If I ever need emergency care again, that I will go to my primary care, they will have to call an ambulance and they will have to force me into it. I'm not going to the ER anymore. This is a $12,000 bill. I mean, this is like a very large portion of the mortgage that I owe on my house. This is more than the student loan payments that I owe. I mean, it's, it's a ridiculous number for the, the few hours of care that I received for them to not even cover it. Like I said, if, if my daughter's in an emergency situation, of course, you know, you know mother, motherly duties first, I would absolutely take her and, and kind of bite the bullet on the, the payment, but I will never seek emergency care for myself. And I feel like that's really dangerous for a lot of people because you, you may be in an emergent situation, but you're too afraid to go because you're afraid of that bill. And I even wrote that in one of my appeals that, you know, you may have people who are having a stroke or internal bleeding. I'm not even sure if you know how you're having internal bleeding, but you may be facing these emergent situations and not know it and be too afraid to go. The day that we went to the emergency room, I was glad we went and that everything was okay. And then when the bill came, and you see that it's not covered and they don't think you should have gone, then, then there were a lot of doubts that should I have gone or not, should I have just ridden out the pain. I think when you pay every month, <laughs> you expect a reasonable amount of care from them um, and that then they're not gonna make you go through a stressful and time consuming process to fight for what seems like should have been covered. Um, and we've talked to a lot of people since then and they all felt like it should be covered. So we're in the process of a second um, appeal with Anthem to pay the bill because it's, it, I just, I, it's just frustrating. Um, and I, and I think they should pay. I, I feel like I don't need insurance. I just should just not pay. I pay a lot more than that bill, you know, was a year, you know, to have it. And well, it scares why, me because I think I have it if it people doesn't. won't go to the emergency room when they really need to go to the emergency room. I mean, I really thought I was having a stroke. I'm not a medical professional, but my body was telling me there was something wrong and that I needed to seek immediate medical attention. People are gonna die. People are gonna die. People are, number one, gonna suffer. Number two, they're gonna die. And they're, they're just gonna be so fearful. A lot of people are on fixed incomes, and they can't afford a, a four, five, six thousand dollar ER visit. And if they wait to go to their primary care physician in the, you know, if it happens in the middle of the night and there's nowhere else to go, and this is your only option, I'd rather them be safe than sorry. There's so many things that will trickle down from this that I don't think Anthem is is even thinking of especially when you, it comes to the elderly you know you they are on a fixed income they can't afford it and i just really think that it's going to trickle down and they're either going to have to give up something or they're going to wait 
and it's going to kill them. In the end, they would have all made the same decision based on their symptoms, and every health professional we have talked to agrees with their decision and need for an urgent evaluation. Yes, I think, you know, the level of pain I was in, if someone else was in that level of pain, I, I would totally understand them wanting to go and seek treatment. And I think it's I think it's a little bit scary to have to sit at home and weigh the cost of what will this cost me if my insurance pays or if my insurance won't pay um, to seek medical treatment. You know, there is some judgment I know that's involved with, with what you do. Um, if my kid's got a cold, they're going to go to the pediatrician. They can um, wait. They you can know, wait to the next day or, the, you or know, so. If they've I mean, got a snotty a nose and it's clear, so, I mean, it's not then like... I'm going to wait and take them to the pediatrician. I'm not going to wrap them up at 12 o'clock at night and rush them to the ER for a runny nose. I mean, that's kind of common sense, but I still don't. Maybe that runny nose could turn into something else. I don't know. Um, I can't diagnose. Where, maybe this is where it's all come from. The insurance company wants to stop that, but your case definitely is not like a runny nose. No. I can understand people going to the emergency room for a cold is nonsense, and I'd want to stop that. But if, they're ha if they have 105 fever and it's, you know, at night, I'm going to take them to the emergency room. You know, I can't diagnose what's happening with somebody, and I don't think they should expect me to be able to diagnose what's going on with myself or anybody else, including my children or my mother or my father. Exactly. That's neglect. That's pure neglect. It's absolutely pure neglect to do that. Because like I said before, if you have an 80 year old woman and she is in trouble and she cannot refer back to something that says, oh, they're not going to see you for, you know, they're not going to see you in the emergency room because this complaint's not on the list. That's neglect. They forget we're the customer. We're yeah, paying them. we pay them. Yeah, I mean, it's not they're supposed the to take care of us. And Kim feels like the insurance industry should be held to the same requirements and standards and expectations as the emergency departments and physicians that are providing the care. Why is Anthem not held to the same standards as the emergency room? Is it because they're, well, your hospitals are privately owned, aren't they? Well, then they should be held to the same standards. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. If you are a customer and you are paying for care, then they should be held to the exact same standards as the emergency department. No, no questions yeah. asked. Who gives them, Hands down. Who gives them the authority to decide? Exactly. You're covered. You're not. Oh, this is on the list now. Yeah. Yeah. We're, well, Wait a minute. Yeah, I well, take well, back this yeah. thing about this list. Wait a minute. If hospitals are required to treat people no matter what and a consumer pays an insurance company money to take care of them when they need medical attention, then they should be held to the same standards as the hospitals. No questions asked. One of the keys to the access to emergency medicine are laws establishing the prudent layperson standard. This states that a reasonable layperson who feels like they have an emergent medical condition have the right to access emergency departments for their care and insurance will cover that evaluation. Unfortunately, Anthem is using some Monday morning quarterback skills to deny a visit that was found not to be an acutely life-threatening condition at discharge but no way that the patient would have known that before they went to the emergency department. This has the potential to make people second guess, delay, and is potentially against the law. Most hospitals and physician groups will be happy to work with you on a reasonable rate and payment schedule. Interestingly, this program by Anthem does not involve children, care provided on Sunday, or customers that are extended distances from any care option other than the emergency department. Until next time, I'm Dr. Ryan Stanton, and this is Stanton MD.